Union with Christ, May 9. Abide in me and I in you, as the branch cannot bear fruit of itself, except it abide in the vine. No more can ye, except ye abide in me. John 15, verse 4. Every individual by his own act either puts Christ from him by refusing to cherish his spirit and follow his example, or he enters into a personal union with Christ by self-renunciation, faith, and obedience. We must, each for himself, choose Christ, because he has first chosen us. This union with Christ is to be formed by those who are naturally at enmity with him. It is a relation of utter dependence, to be entered into by a proud heart. This is close work, and many who profess to be followers of Christ know nothing of it. They nominally accept the Savior, but not as the sole ruler of their hearts. The evil tendencies of mankind are hard to overcome. The battles are tedious. Every soul in the strife knows how severe, how bitter are these contests. Everything about growth in grace is difficult because the standard and maxims of the world are constantly interposed between the soul and God's holy standard. The Lord would have us elevated, ennobled, purified by carrying out the principles underlying his great moral standard, which will test every character in the great day of final reckoning. We must gain the victory over self, crucify the affections and lusts, and then begins the union of the soul with Christ. After this union is formed, it can be preserved only by continual, earnest, painstaking effort. Every Christian must stand on guard continually, watching every avenue of the soul where Satan might find access. He must pray for divine help and at the same time resolutely resist every inclination to sin. By courage, by faith, by persevering toil, he can conquer. But let him remember that to gain the victory, Christ must abide in him and he in Christ. It is only by personal union with Christ, by communion with him daily, hourly, that we can bear the fruits of the Holy Spirit.